Hey guys, and how about we watch Raven vs. Twilight Sparkle Death Battle? Okay, so I just have to address this. When I first saw this match, I thought that it would be a stomp for Raven, because I knew a little bit about her powers from Teen Titans. I assumed that moving over to the comics, she would get much more powerful. Apparently, it's, for the most part, the opposite way around. In the TV show, that's as powerful as she gets. Whereas for Twilight, I thought I knew everything there was about her, and that's something that made me fairly certain that she would lose. But there are comic books for MLP, and she gets a lot more powerful in those. Like, a lot more powerful. A lot more useful combat spells and all that. So ultimately what I'm saying here is that I was wrong. I don't think Raven will stomp, and at this point, I'm thinking Twilight will st maybe not stomp, but she'll win. I do think Twilight will win. And I'm not going to get into details because that's not my job. That's up to these guys. And I might get it right, I might get it wrong. I don't know, but either way, let's start our show. This episode of Death Battle is brought to you by War Robots, the tactical 6v6 multiplayer game for iOS, Android, and Fire OS. The game's like if Wiz's love for science and my love for weapons had a baby, wrapped in rich 3D graphics. Install War Robots now by clicking the link in the description and get a huge starter pack that contains a GI patent robot with a unique skin, four Punisher machine guns, 100 gold, and 400,000 silver. Emotions can be powerful things. Ugh, we're really gonna talk about feelings and crying and stuff. Well, yes, and how they fuel some pretty powerful magic. Sounds good. <laughs> like with Raven, the half <laughs> Oh, and that's another thing. From the there are Titan. more similarities than I Sparkle, gave it credit the for. The magical prodigy from My Little Pony. Yep, really doing this again. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. A strong emotion can drastically change a person. Fear can trigger instincts necessary for survival. Anger can increase adrenaline for incredible feats of strength. And for this edgy looking chick in a wicked cloak, that's kind of her thing. This is Raven. From the day Raven was born in her home dimension of Azerath, she wasn't the most popular girl around. Yeah, you could say. Exactly mm, you sign. could say that. Right as you're born, the sky turns black and the whole world suddenly smells like farts. See, Raven is the daughter of a human mother and a fearsome demon. Who is literally made up of hatred. Not even kidding. Because of her heritage, Raven's own mental state holds the key to a fearsome inner power. She is an empath, a mage who can sense, create, and manipulate emotions. So her powers are all about feelings and stuff? That's pretty lame. Tell that to her when she <laughs> scrambles your brain, or forces you to feel so greedy you steal from your boss. Oh, <laughs> you don't need to convince me to do that. Wait, what? Uh, I mean... Oh, so uh, is this Boomstick's intense. boss, then? Hey, she's got a lot more deadliness packed away under that cool cloak. When she was 18 years old, Raven met her father for the first time, and it, uh, didn't go very well. Yeah, Demon Dad shot her mom with a grandma laser. That pissed off huh. Raven so much, she finally let loose. This shadowy figure is her soul self, an extension of her spirit and manifestation of the powers inherited from Trigon. Raven often wields Trigon? it as her primary means of offense Trigon. Defense, though it can function on its own. I wish I had a pet bird that could do what the soul self can. This beauty lets Raven fly, use its eyes and ears, or just punch people like a big old battering bird. It can drain <laughs> the energy and powers of others and also serves as a sort of oh. pocket dimension, which Raven can trap a limited number of foes and objects within. Talk about convenient, but she can do way more. She can levitate, teleport, heal others, cast energy shields, phase through walls, and blast people with mystical energy beams. But there is one drawback. To wield her power, Raven must embrace emotion, and too much emotion risks opening her mind to Trigun's corruption. When she gives in to her darker side, her entire personality changes. What's the matter? Afraid of the dark? I surrender! Under a new persona <laughs> appropriately named Dark Raven. 
Dark Raven is stronger, tougher, and freakier than your everyday raven. She can shoot lasers from her eyes, disintegrate stuff with her hand beams, and shapeshift. And her soul self is so powerful, shape -shifting is pretty good. most people off the face of the earth in an instant. However, Dark Raven's incredible capabilities are a double-edged sword. By tapping into her father's demonic powers, she risks transporting Trigon himself to the living realm, kickstarting devastation across the universe. Kickstarting? I wonder what the tier rewards are like for that. Pledge 20 bucks and get an autograph from Satan. Thankfully, oh, she what? has been able to free herself from Trigon's control, granting her unlimited access to her own magical abilities. Sometimes she even wears white to celebrate the occasion. Or is that just for her wedding with Beast Boy? Oh wait, that never happened. These comic books reboot way too often for any relationships to actually have lasting consequences. Silly me. <laughs> Last but not least, there's Raven's Golden Form. Oh, a spiritual I body haven't heard of this. Which manifested after she turned evil and had to be killed by her friends, the Teen Titans. Oh, uh, that's messed up. It happens a lot, actually. Anyway, Raven's accomplished plenty of incredible feats. She's bent steel girders with her magic, toughed out getting thrown butt first into a brick wall so hard it broke, uh, the wall, not, not her butt, and even helped Terra, a fellow Titan, raise the Teen Titans headquarters and the island it's on. Terra alone was barely able to stop the island's descent, and together they pushed it back up to its rightful place. This means Raven lifted more than half of the island's weight. The Titan's Tower Island is similar in location and size to Alcatraz, which has a width um, of 550 okay, yards. Then. Assuming the most likely granite composition and accounting for a 30% hollow interior, Raven's energy output would need to be about 14 million megawatt hours. That's enough energy to power all of New York City for over three years. Raven's soul that's self can so weird to use. The like that the specific no that's almost type 14, of measurement is so weird. Inch, Forty-two times the psi needed to crack most bones, and it's tough enough to survive laser blasts from aliens that hurt Donna Troy. Who can survive moon busting attacks? The villain Sparta's lasers could disintegrate people. In okay, her instant, soul self is really powerful. That might actually give energy. her and enough Raven's to beat Twilight. Maybe blasts and held together. The Soul Self is also stupidly fast. It once flew from New York City to Blue Valley, Nebraska, and back in less than five minutes. The distance between those cities is 1,166 miles as the crow, or raven, flies. To make this trip in time, Raven's Soul Self must have flown more than 36 times the speed of sound. Not impressed? Well, when she was golden, Ghosty Raven, she flew between the Earth and Moon like it was nothing. So, plenty of impressive feats, but unfortunately, Raven's powers have daunting and often costly limits. When the Soul Self takes damage, Raven feels the pain herself. She's mm. kinda like a glass cannon, and overtaxes her own abilities pretty frequently. But don't disregard this as only mere physical ineptitude. When Raven utilizes emotions in combat, she tackles that emotion head on. The more negative the emotion, the more pain she feels. And don't forget, she's also struggling not to feel so Satan doesn't show up. With all that <laughs> going on at once, it's no wonder she passes out sometimes. But with the help of her friends and her adoptive Azerathian family, Raven eventually overcame Trigon's iron grip and defeated him. Yeah, you'd think a guy like Trigon would think twice before messing with someone as powerful as Raven. No! You stay away from me! You demon filth! They're not demons. Let me show you one. Azeroth, Metreon, Synthos! Hmm. Not time to do this again. the peaceful Ponyville, the city of Canterlot rests among the mountains. Let's see how much depth there, they go into here. had dreams as big as Canterlot Castle itself. Because this is the first Ponyville one they're taking 100% seriously. Uh, here we go again. I mean... We've seen a pony that breaks the sound barrier and one that breaks physics, so what crazy powerful thing can this one do, Wiz? All to your horses, Boomstick. We're merely out of the gate. What? Uh, it in, We're not Wiz. doing this. Your lame puns are musting with my script. Little Twilight wanted to learn magic at Princess Celestia's school for gifted unicorns. After a very, uh, eventful entrance exam, she didn't just get accepted into the school, she became Celestia's protege. Which is kind of a big deal, since Celestia is Oh, it's so weird. The preview went into more detail. Not only that, Twilight also earned her cutie mark. Oh, I remember those. It's that magical tramp stamp a pony gets when they grow up. Uh, close enough? Twilight's cutie mark symbolized her life's calling. 
specifically her destiny in mastering the art of magic. This peppy purple pony wasted no time and hit the books to practice hard. By the time she was an adult, she'd read her entire collection of 20,000 books. Ooh. What a nerd. Boomstick, have you ever read a book before? Do gun manuals count? Sure, <laughs> why not? Oh, there we go. Twilight learned all sorts of powerful and useful magic. She knows so many spells, it would take well over an hour to describe them all. Her memory is so crystal clear, she can recall a complex spell after a mere glance. But here's some highlights. She can move stuff with her mind, shoot concussive energy blasts, raise magic shields, and rapid fire teleport. She can manipulate gravity, ignite things on fire, oh, yeah, she did do that. place, walk on clouds, <laughs> and even master the transfiguration spell. As a filly, she turned her own parents into plants. Talk about weird. She's even transformed a single apple into a nest of bird eggs. Which, uh, hatched somehow. She is great, life! Yes! <laughs> but Twilight's magic doesn't just stem from her vast knowledge of spells and history. In the world of My Little Pony, magic is drawn from and controlled by a unicorn's emotions. Oh, ah. the touchy-feely stuff. The stronger a unicorn feels about something or someone, the stronger their magic becomes. Well, I've always found magic is tied to my emotions. Whatever I'm feeling fuels whatever I'm doing, and the stronger I'm feeling, the stronger the magic. Across Equestria, Twilight Sparkle <laughs> is one of the few ponies to master the most powerful magic of all, the magic of friendship. Okay, Wiz, I know a metaphor when I see it. Isn't a night out with the girls so magical? Oh, no, 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 that's not it at all. In truth, friendship is the only weapon powerful enough to defeat Equestria's most dangerous enemies. What? They weaponized friendship? Awesome. Yes. Hey, Wiz, you're, you're my best buddy. I, you're friends forever. Come here, give me a hug. Where are the friendship lasers? Get off me. Um, oh, yeah, upside. I didn't... I slipped. Um. <laughs> Twilight's friendship magic is at its most powerful when focused through the elements of harmony. When used together, these ancient artifacts are an Are they going to give her those? I mean, of overpowering the villain Tirek after he stole Twilight's power. I mean, along she with the rest needs of the, the other Twilight's five crown for with that. Her personal element contains a powerful magic in its own right, enough to literally change the fabric of reality in another dimension with its mere presence. You know, I suppose course, that is we gotta true. Talk about those wings of hers. She was born a unicorn, but after completing an ancient spell about, what else, friendship, she transformed into an alicorn. A mix between a unicorn and a pegasus, and a chance to sell just a whole ton more merchandise. <laughs> it's a good thing too. Alicorn magic is leagues more powerful than a plain unicorn's, and Twilight needed the extra boost to defend Equestria as its newest princess. Like when she fought that Tyrek guy. After Tyrek absorbed the magic from Equestria's entire population, Twilight was forced to confront him herself while wielding the power of four alicorns. Where did it become Dragon Ball Z with baby girl horse toys? <laughs> hey, check out how Tira rocketed Twilight straight into this mountain, and she was totally fine thanks to her magic shield. By comparing Twilight's current <laughs> size just before impact to her actual size of approximately four feet tall, we can estimate that, the distance she was thrown to be about 145 feet. That screen capture. Tira then closed this distance at 64.5 miles per hour. Combined with his estimated weight of over 31,000 pounds, Twilight's shield had to stand up to over 8 million newtons of force. Oh god! You know what? Forget it. I'm on board with this pony stuff. <laughs> Twilight is tough enough to survive bombardment by anvils and pianos. Are we fast enough really to going to measure that, though? She didn't spells, have... And even strong enough to that wasn't her own magic. That's the tons. problem. Her telekinesis is strong enough to lift a 340-ton bear and even uproot this giant flower tree thing. And I mean, that isn't nearly as impressive. Magic, she can move the sun and the moon. Okay. Well, yeah, that's their power. power. Way better than expected. However, if Twilight has one glaring weakness, it's her unwavering neurosis. Oh, you mean how she's obsessed over staying organized and if one small thing goes wrong, she totally loses it? Yes. She has a, well, difficult time dealing with unexpected stress. More often than not, she even makes bad situations worse before starting to fix them. But hey, when push comes to shove, Twilight Sparkle pulls her weight and more. You have no magic! You're wrong, T-Rex. I may have given you my alicorn magic, 
but I carry within me the most powerful magic of all. The magic of friendship. <laughs> okay, then. All right, uh, the combatants are set. Yeah, Let's they're... end this debate once and for all. But first, there was a bit more for me undies. In a world Ooh, a new by ad. despair, darkness, and terrible underwear. Anyway, only anyway, one um, we trust to keep the balance of style uh, and comfort. They had more for Raven than I thought they would. The best pair of in and the world. Twilight, they're, they're using more feats than I think they really should. You know what I mean? Uh, from sustainably sourced fabric, one, the elements part of she's never really the used them by comfort. herself, the all of them. And, and if they're using hers alone, then we only have that one movie back. to use. It's dangerous to go unclothed. Get the softest underwear you'll ever own, 20% off free uh, What is this? And 100% satisfaction um, guarantee. Just head to <laughs> meandies.com forward slash battle. That's me. Yeah, they use that, and they use a feat of that limited. shield when, again, she was using all four of the alicorns' magic. Also, I did not need to see that bullshit. Right God but damn. first, <laughs> it's time for a death battle! For some reason, they have the library and the castle. Of course. Teen Titans, go. Why did you do this? Saw nothing. She is using that, so okay then. Please work. I want it. I need it. Oh, they never went over that. Why didn't they go over that if they were? What just happened? <laughs> well, that was odd. K.O. Dear Princess Celestia, today I learned that the only thing more powerful than friendship is a giant bird spirit colliding into me at Mark 36. <laughs> this was a tricky one. Both Raven and Twilight possess numerous spells and techniques that could end the other quickly and easily. Since they were pretty even in how many ways they could finish each other off, this fight really came down to strength, durability, and performance. First of all, it's pretty obvious Raven's telekinesis has been shown to be much stronger than Twilight's. But Wiz, what about when Twilight moved the sun and moon? That's when she had the magic of Princess Celestia and Luna, and it's well established that only their specific type of magic can move those celestial bodies. So, you're saying you want us to move the sun and the moon. Well, I do it myself, except I don't have your magic. With her own magic, Twilight has never shown anything close to the kind of force Raven used to lift the Teen Titans Tower. 
Raven had the durability advantage too. Remember how Twilight Shield held up against a hit a little over 8 million Newtons? Well, Raven's soul self is tougher than Donna Troy, who can shrug off a blast worth 296 trillion Newtons. <laughs> That's uh, 16 more zeros, in case you're wondering. And don't forget Twilight had the power of four alicorns at that time. The shield wouldn't have saved her from Raven's soul self anyway. Not only could it absorb Twilight's Like seriously though, I don't know why they even went over that stuff if they weren't going to Raven use it. Unconscious, but it also made a mean dive bomber. Raven's soul self could fly at speeds exceeding Mach 36. Since it's often been used as a battering ram to hit enemies, we know it has mass, but not exactly how much. However, given its size, strength, and durability far exceeds Raven's Oh, also own, something I wanted to note is it, it's hers. not as though without emotion a unicorn can't sure. use magic. Adding Raven's it just mass to the Mach heightens it. Calculation, anyway. Soul Self's ramming force at top speed comes to 15 million newtons of force, far greater than what Twilight Shield has sustained. Mm. Ain't no pony walking away from that. Plus, Twilight's positive attitude meant Raven didn't have to even worry about pain when using her emotions against her. While they may have matched each other in spells and skill, Raven's more powerful traits and exceptional soul self earned her a hard-fought victory. Yep, Raven really ponied up for this one. The winner is Raven. Nice. Okay. I can agree with that, but, uh, this episode, just click that like, box over there and start a first membership. Wow. And if you want the battle music for yourself, you can click the link in the description below and get it off iTunes. See you the next one. Oh, Jojo. Jotaru versus Kenshiro. I don't know too much about them, but uh, okay. Yeah, I don't have anything to say about that. I'm really confused, not over the outcome, because they did a lot of math that I wasn't expecting, I can say, for Raven, like the, the lifting of the building. Hmm. That was something I wasn't expecting as far as feats go, but um, I'm really confused as for how they did Twilight's analysis. I just... that's what I'm trying to get out right now. Because it didn't make any sense, really. Um, uh, frankly, I don't get why they mention a lot of the stuff. For one, the Elven of Harmony never has boosted her power specifically. The most I was thinking they might do is have it be more powerful in Raven's pocket dimension. That was something I thought they might do. That's the only thing that the Element of Harmony has ever been shown to do, be unstable in other dimensions. Um, then there's the whole thing with why measure any feats from, like, genuinely, why measure any feats from her fight with T-Rex? It doesn't matter because she doesn't have that level of magic. We don't know how powerful each of the other princesses are in these regards, so we don't know how that could even be measured. Yeah, not to mention they didn't actually go over the need it, want it, whatever spell. So it's worth noting, I do watch those uh, little tiny analysis things they release, and in that one they went over it, like, in relative detail, and I'm surprised they didn't do that here, especially because they specifically use it. Secondary question, which isn't really nearly as much of a thing. It isn't really nearly as important. Um, she definitely could have just teleported out of the soul self when it was trying to consume her. Anyway, that's it for this video. I suppose I was wrong? Um, yeah. So, if you liked the video, you can leave a like down there. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, then you can subscribe to the channel. Alright, I will see all of you in the next video.